Hello and welcome into this week's episode of the Recruiting Blitz. I am Greg Smith, Senior Recruiting Analyst here at Inside Nebraska, and I am joined once again by digital content extraordinaire Jansen Coburn. Jansen, how are you, man? I'm doing good, Greg, and it's it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. I almost said we're we're back. Like the the schedules have been hectic. You know, it's it's a weird time um, of year. Like once spring ball ends, and we're kind of in that lull, but before kind of Big Ten media days is that like unofficial kickoff uh for the season which is coming up here like in a week and a half or so um and, but no the schedules are back where i'm off of vacation um we're we're ready to roll man yeah speaking of that media days you see all the big 12 media day stuff it's it's funny with all the the tension they got with the conference realignment but um i like it because it shows you that football's back and uh oh yeah you can feel it uh, we got a little bit of a short one today because, as you mentioned, it's kind of that quiet time of the recruiting cycle. And uh, we did get some news very late last <laughs> night. And this morning, if you're out in Nebraska, uh, Preston Tauma committed to Nebraska. And Nebraska won out over some really good programs. Mm -hmm. So uh, just right away, what's your quick reaction to that? Yeah, it's, it's a great pickup for Nebraska. I think that this is one, you know, when you start to think about the things that Nebraska is going to have to do to get to even to not even be back. I hate saying that to be back to, to, to take steps towards getting back because there are ways away, um, take steps towards getting back and being competitive in the conference. These are the types of players that Nebraska has to land because we've said it before on this podcast or numerous times. Um, it's going to start up front for Nebraska. Like the Big Ten is a line of scrimmage in the trenches league, right? And to win in this league, you're going to have to be able to have some really talented players up front because it seems like every team Nebraska plays, you know, even when it's the teams that aren't all that good, like they've got guys that they're putting into the NFL of the lines of scrimmage, right? Nebraska needs to get back to that. And I think that Preston is one of those types of kids. Um, first and foremost, he's a really talented player, um, 6'4", 300 plus pounds. I think he moves well for his size as well. I think he will be an interior player. I think he's a guard um, in college. And so on the field they're getting the exact type of player like i said that they need right off the field big picture wise i think it's a really big deal for donovan rayola um to go out to california or to to California to go out to Hawaii and get the number one close. player in Hawaii. Yeah, close. I've got California on the mind because of you. Um, so then we get go out to Hawaii, get the number one player out there. After you know, there's there's been this thing with Nebraska where there's there's heavy flirtation right between Nebraska almost getting that guy from Hawaii. Um, they got one a couple of years ago and Wendon Huuli, um, who ended up transferring pretty quickly, right, and had a hard time adjusting. But the other other than him, they've had a hard time in recent years trying to get players from out there. And this is the, you've got the start of it. There's a couple of guys, a couple of Polynesian guys on the team already. They had Sua Lafutu um, in the last recruiting class as well. Um, I think you're starting to build that up a little bit. But it is huge for Donnie, as um, Frost used to call him, because it shows that he can be a pretty good recruiter. Like he got, like, and I said this on the message board, the insiders board, that he's taken a lot of arrows <laughs> over the last like year or so. And a lot rightfully so because the unit just didn't play well last year. Right. But at the same time, we didn't know how much input he had both on the field with what they were doing and definitely with recruiting and being able to pick players. And right now it looks like all of these guys in this class right now really kind of take after him, right? Like they're, throwback players uh, I think Steve Mark on our staff called them all ass kickers like that's basically what they all are um, and Preston definitely fits in that it's a really nice pickup for the team yeah and I think going into the month of June Nebraska had single digit commits you fast mm -hmm. forward a month Nebraska is at not only double digit commits they're over 20 <laughs> now I think they're at 24 so yeah 24 um, it start you start to ask the question how many spots does nebraska have left like how close are they to filling up this class do we know that do we know where they're going to cap it off I do not know for sure what the number is. I, if I were to kind of poke around, my suspicion would be that they're going to, they would say that they're going to take as many guys as they can take that they think are good football players and then figure it out later. And that's kind of where we are in today's day and age with college football recruiting. And now I, I don't think that that means they're going to get to like 35 or anything like that. I do think that they're going to get at least a couple more. And, and I think that uh, you probably are still looking at another um, edge rusher, like a type of edge rusher jack outside linebacker whatever way that he want to term it because it's kind of all of the above right now right in that defense um they need to get another guy like that 
that they need another true tackle. And this is where the press and um news, I mean, one of the immediate questions I got was, hey, does this put them out of the running for Grant Bricks? No, it doesn't. Um, because they play two different positions. So they need a, a true tackle. Grant B Bricks, one of the best in the Midwest um, at that particular position. And it's, a, it's actually a weak tackle year overall in the 24 cycle. So if Nebraska were to get Grant Bricks, um, that would be huge. That's definitely a need. And then I think that they're always looking for kind of a best overall athlete, right? If they can get a kid mm -hmm. that that can, you know, has some position flexibility on either side of the football, I think they would take him. Um, and the one thing that I would mention too is that I think that flip targets is something that we're going to end up talking about as we get into the season. I'm just putting that bug in people's ear right now that I think that we're going to end up because Nebraska right now um, on July 17th has 24 players already in the class and they could basically be done. They can circle back and really work on guys that maybe they missed out on earlier, especially if they can have a pretty good start to the season. If the recruiting cycle ended today and you just took a snapshot of the class that they have in place right now, how do you feel about the class that they've assembled? A, a lot of guys came in very quickly. So, like, are there any holes still? I think you mentioned tackle, but, like, how well have they put this together thus far? I, I actually really like what they've done um, in putting this group together. I think that this it's a really – it's a really unique class too because there are some guys that you would think are some more known commodities in the class you know Ja'Cory Barney um, the wide receiver out of Miami Florida like he's a guy that you just feel really good about in this class Keon Lacey um, the same way um, that then you kind of look at guys that are just going to get forgotten about that I think are really good players like Evan Taylor the defensive back out of North Carolina that committed um, and then you have mainstays like Brandon or uh, Mario Buford like in the class like I think it's a really good mix mixture of guys that you feel that are going to be really good players in college and you'd be surprised if they didn't end up being contributors with some guys that have some really high ceiling and potential um, I think it's a really good mix and I also think that that's basically the blueprint blueprint of what you're going to see in Matt Rule's recruiting classes I think that this is basically what you're going to see starting with what we kind of talked about the last time we did an episode which was about all those camp guys those guys that they worked out at their camps saw in firsthand and worked with them and then got them in the fold and that's something that we're going to definitely continue to see because you're going to find, I think we're going to see like the next couple of years, like, oh yeah, that kid came to the Matt Rule football camp and we didn't know, like that's going to be a thing moving forward as well. All right. Well, we're at that point where there's, there's a select few spots left. It seems like they're going to be a little more selective as they move forward. So mm -hmm. who would you say are some individuals that are priority players for Nebraska as they try to fill out the last couple spots? Yeah, I, I definitely think, like I said, I've mentioned before, Grant Bricks is a guy um, that Nebraska is, is definitely highly in on. The, the number one player um, in the state of um, Iowa, he's a, he's a big time player uh, that Nebraska really, really wants into the fold. I think that there's another offensive tackle, um, Nuku Mafi from out west. Um, he's another player to kind of keep an eye on. Um, I just lost the kid's name, DeVoe, uh, the outside linebacker. Altaga? Is it there the we go. Uh, yeah, the defensive yeah. end slash out side linebacker who's who is scheduled to come in for an official visit at the end of July um, which will be another thing that'll kind of sneak up us sneak up on us once this dead period lifts at the end of this month teams will be able to bring in official visitors for that one weekend at the end of July I do expect to see it, he'll be here um, on kind of a rescheduled official visit and that's a big one I think that's another kid that can continue to elevate this class um, as well but I wouldn't be surprised if you saw another guy or two um, come that weekend too but those are three guys for sure that I that I would have your eye on. And then I do think that the, the two guys kind of, or the guy that, that is worth mentioning that we're always asked about, Brandon Baker, the offensive tackle out of California. Like I, I will, I always say that Nebraska is fighting an uphill battle on that one, but the longer that goes with him being uncommitted and you get closer to the season and maybe get him out back out in Lincoln for an official visit, then all bets are kind of off. So if we, if, if Nebraska can pull that Saying off and get him chance. back on campus, if you can get him on campus, there's a chance. I won't go there fully until you get him back on campus. But also I know people are always asking about him. Uh, so he he's in the mix as well. All right. That's awesome stuff, Greg. It was a short one today, but a good one. And that's all I got for you. You got any closing thoughts? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's good to be back. So thank you guys for staying patient with us as we kind of work things through here. Uh, we'll be back kind of on our regular schedule, kind of moving out here on out as we get ready uh, to kick it into the season. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel uh, so you can get these videos directly into your feed. Pop on over to InsideNebraska.com. We'll have full coverage of Big Ten Media Days coming up. Camp starts July 31st. They're going old school. Yeah. Remember the Titan style? They're all moving into the dorms. Um, I can't wait to hear all about that that uh, we will catch you guys later.